It's Don, the Auction Professor here. Um, I just got back from my very first garage sale of this year. Um, weather has not been good until recently. Uh, it's still pretty cold outside now, um, but I did go to one. It was a slash estate sale garage sale, so I wasn't expecting much. Um, I took one of my kids with me. It was just something to do. Um, there's a flea market this weekend I may go to, and I may take some video there possibly. Um, we'll see what they say. But um, I got these things, and I've got a few dolls and a few statues down here I'll show you. Um, this right here, all of these little figures I got right here in my hand, I paid a dollar for out of their little toy bin. Um, like these right here. Um, I got the little head. He's missing some hair. I've got that, though. Um, these are Phineas and Ferb figures. Um, I believe it was a Disney. Yeah, it's Disney. Um, again, I got a dollar in all of this, so... These I'll probably put on once I put his hair back on for like seven, eight bucks. Probably get five or six bucks out of them. Um, I don't know if they're game pieces or what. Um, they're all marked. They're even individually numbered, so they might be something different. Um, I've talked about the Bendems in another video. Here's an original 1968 um, Raggedy Ann and Annie one. A smaller one. Um, needs a little cleaning up. It's got some gunk. Looks like it, yeah, it'll come off. Um, but this is probably... I've got a couple more of these, so I'll probably put a lot up and probably get... I don't know, three or four bucks for her with the lot, so it'd probably go for like 12, 15 bucks for a lot of like three or four of these. The best two in there are these two figures here. Um, these are muscle men. I'll see if I can get a close up of these. I've sold individual figures like this. They're usually marked Y slash NT or Y slash S, um, Y underscore S, NT. These are muscle men. They came in like little tubs, like um, cans. Um, some of these I've sold for 75 or 80 bucks for just one of these little figures. Um, I routinely sell these. I routinely see them. They come in different uh, colors for each individual character. So this one character could be in half a dozen different colors. Some of them are worth more than others. But muscle men. Um, there's actually a, a dot or a period between each letter in the word muscle. So if you're looking it up, look up muscle men and you will see some horrendously huge prices. I've sold a lot of 70 of these for over $200 before. So, And I only paid four or five bucks for the lot. It was a bag lot. I got them at a garage sale. Um, and again, these all were a dollar just for these figures. Um, here's some vintage Disney. Um, I'll have to see what these are from. I literally didn't look at them very closely. Uh, they're rubber... Walt Disney Productions, probably 60s or 70s. Um, these are all what they are. This one's, he's even rubber too. Uh, it looks like a Marx. It's actually a Marx. So uh, this one little uh, Pluto figure here could be worth, um, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks. I'll probably put these in a lot in the Disney section on uh, collectibles for like, I don't know, 16, 17, 50, and take what I can get. I'd probably get 8, 10 bucks for these three if they're from something any decent. This is probably like a missing piece from like a train set, it looks like. Um, and that kind of stuff to replace their missing parts. Probably an easily lost part. This makes it worth more money. Um, this one is just a Pokemon. Um, I know some of these. This is 2007. I've had this same one once or twice before. I buy Pokemon stuff like this a lot. Um, I'll probably get six, seven bucks for him. I've sold figures from the same series and sets for 20, 30 bucks before. Um, I usually try and get them in a lot for cheap, um, like this. I mean, I got pennies into these. Darkwing Duck. This is actually from the cereal. It's an original 92 from when it first came out. Um, I've sold this one before for 12, 14 bucks. It's a serial promotion, so that's what you'd list it under or in the Disney section. There's actually a collectibles advertising serial and uh, product or uh, promotional items, so that's where that could go too. Um, this was in there. This was from the 60s, I would say. It's like a gumball machine piece. I'll probably put 14, 15 bucks on this thing. Um, it's it's like a casino piece. It's a small mini roulette wheel. Um, a lot of this kind of stuff does sell very well, so I know it just looks like junk, a like little keychain, um, but it's vintage, it's from the 60s, so, you know, it's 40 plus years old. Um, again, I'll probably get like 14 bucks for it. Um, I've done the Peyo Smurfs, um, Schlitch, I, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, made in Hong Kong, this is 1981, um, it's actually a Barry, it's an original... Uh, I've sold some of these individual ones for, I don't know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks for some of the Smurfs. I haven't seen this one before, but I don't know all the Smurfs. There's six, seven hundred different versions of the Smurfs that came out in the 80s by Peyo. Um, who, I'll probably hold on to this one. I've probably got a box with like 10 or 20 of these in it somewhere. 
Um, I just throw these in a bin. I've got a tub that these will all go into, and eventually I'll start through them when I get enough of them, and then I'll just spend a couple hours just listing this kind of material. I don't waste my time. Just let's list this one item. I've got so much stuff. We schedule it, as I said, uh, months in advance of what's going to be listed at any given time, and we try to build up enough of the same type of items to get more than just one purchase. Um, it's hard in a collectible to get more than a, a single purchase unless you have multiple items that a person would collect. So that's one of our business models. I've talked about business models in another one and that's one of the business models we use is to hold on to items until we get enough to sell them in quantity. Uh, some of the other items I got from the garage are these. These are pieces from Pella Windows um, that they literally didn't use from brand new windows. I buy these all the time. I sell Pella parts Geez, a couple times a month, even sometimes once or twice a week I sell these. I buy them in bulk sometimes when people are having new construction sites and they have leftover parts. You'll see these junked out by the street even. I've picked up boxes of this stuff. I've sold Pella individual windows pieces like this for 20 bucks, 30 bucks even in some instances, like door pulls, latches, locks, clasps. Um, get them sealed, though. That's the most important thing. And again, these are just leftovers. If you're going by a house and you see they put new windows in and there's parts or boxes from windows, ask. Sometimes they don't even know they're worth anything or they want to hang on to them or whatever the case may be. But most of the time, the actual item number is listed on them in some way, shape, or form. Um, and again, the metal pieces are the best. But I'm probably going to put 10 bucks a piece on these or more. Um, another quick thing here, too, you see that somebody wrote with a magic or with a uh, permit marker on here. A good way to get rid of that on plastic items like this is with an Expo. Um, this is literally... Uh, permanent marker. But with an Expo, the chemicals in here eat away that. If you see the 35 cents, which is what I paid for down there, I am going to just rub the es Expo over it. This works on plastic, it works on cardboard, it works on I don't know how much stuff. Perfectly removes every aspect of it. Now you got to test it on the item a little bit at a time to make sure it's safe, but I've done these for years on the Pella. I bought Pella and sold Pella items like this for probably two or three years. First time I realized it, I looked for it and I found it pretty much all the time. I get Pella items constantly, not just Pella, there's other brands too. But again, here, just pick this has been on there for a while. It's not going to come off with my fingers or water or soap. Again, the Expo does it again every time. This is a hack, I guess you'd call it. Most people aren't aware of it. I found it out by accident because where I worked, we had a, a sales board that I kept track on the sales. And you can actually see it's gone again. Uh, there might be a little spot. I'll have to just go and do it again that I missed and didn't rub it over. But the key is to actually drench the area with the, the chemicals that are in these. And again, it clears it right off does it from boxes of new products, labels from clothing. Again, test it because it doesn't always work. There's some, some surfaces on materials that it won't work on. It won't work on any porous material, for instance. But uh, again, that's just uh, a little hack since I was talking about it. Um, and I also got, well, I'll show you the smaller ones. I got two of these. Uh, price was $4 a piece. Um, I looked at them very closely. It's actually an Italian artist who signed it. Again, most people miss signatures. They usually look at the base on things like this. Um, it's in good condition. These on eBay, um, Santini is the name, B. Santini, S-A-N-T-I-N-I. -I. I've looked up comps for these very same figures. Um, they're running about 100 and 100, or to $125 a piece on these, so this was a good score. Um, it's probably a $175 after fees profit on just these two for the eight bucks I have into the pair, $4 a piece. Um, I also got this. Um, it's going to be a little hard to show you, but this is a, a PlayPal doll. Most people don't pay much attention to them. They don't think much of them. They're big. They don't want to have to mail them. Um, they're really tall figures. Um, 36, 38, 48 inches even. I've seen these things are huge. Um, I, I don't know if this is patty or not, but that's the main one I usually get. Um, PlayPal dolls like this, I paid two dollars for this. I think the tag is still... I think it must have fallen off or I took it off, but I paid two dollars for it. She's actually got real shoes on um, that literally can be worn by a person. They've got... they're identical to a real shoe if they are not a real shoe. I'll get over a hundred bucks for this doll. I've sold probably one a month this whole year or last year. Uh, again, PlayPal dolls, they sell very well. Um, 
It might take a little while to sell, but you're going to get good money. I'll probably put, say, $175 on this doll, and that's pretty darn good for a $2 investment. It's missed by most people. They just don't want to mess with the size. They don't know dolls. It looks cheap. It looks junky. This is an original. Um, I don't remember how it was marked. Let's take a look. 1968 Ideal Toy Corp. Um, it's got HD-31-H-127. And that's the mark on the head. Head molds are different than the body. The body, it says Ideal, so they do match. So that's a good thing. And it's 1968 on the body. Um, Ideal Toy Corp. hb 32 um, and I also verify and look at the clothing. The clothing is not authentic. This is actually a kid's outfit. So that was part of the big deal for these um, uh, PlayPal dolls is the kids could interchange them with the smaller kids or with their sister in clothing. So again, PlayPal doll, these are going to sell. I might have it a little while. I'll buy them even with a little indents and... Well, actually, that looks like it's actually her dimples. So actually, that's not damaged. But even in damaged condition, I've sold parts of these and legs and stuff like that in lots and gotten 40 bucks for just a lot of legs or a lot of arms. Um, I buy them any way they come. This one, this one is a walker. Um, might be worth more. I'll have to look that up, actually. I didn't know it was a walker. Walker means that her legs move and coincide with possibly her head turning her arms. Um, always good to get, walkers in general. And then I got two other items at the same sale. That was two dollars. These were a dollar a piece. Um, I guess this was in their ugly doll section. Um, it's a bendy. Uh, it's probably 40s-ish, maybe 50s. Uh, I would say that's a fairy. Um, again, a dollar. It's like a made thing. It's got felt. Uh, it looks really old. It could be 30s even. Uh, for a dollar, I'm probably going to put say 70 bucks on it. It's a fairy doll, and you know, or. I don't know, some kind of parade doll or something, but it's it's a vintage, it's neat, it's original. I don't know if it's handmade, but it's well done. Um, it's got the store-bought vinyl face. Um, good deal, good buy. And then I got this one here. Um, I grew up as a small child in the 70s. No cable, no satellite, uh, three regular stations, and if you're lucky, you got... Um, Detroit and Windsor from Canada, so we did get to see some BBC shows back in the early or uh, the late 70s or early 70s, mid 70s, and into the 80s. Um, this is Buffy's uh, doll from Family Affair. Um, Mrs. Beasley, I think, is the name of her. Actually, um, I paid a dollar again for her. I'll clean her up, fix her hair up, you know, I'll wash it, the whole works. Um, not a big deal, but she's probably worth 30 bucks or so. Um, uh, it's actually a talk or two. I may take it apart and see if I can get it to work and talk. Um, on something like this, um, if you haven't done it before, I would never recommend taking it apart. The stitching you would take apart, though, would be the one back here. This is the only stitching you would ever want to touch because this is the last stitching in line. And if you look closely, you can actually see it was hand-stitched originally when this was made. It's a Mattel. Yeah, it's Mrs. Beasley's. 1967 Family Fair Company. It's an original. Um, I believe it might be missing a piece or something. I don't remember what the, the last one I had had with it. I've had two or three of these in the last three or four years. Don't come up very often, but they're, it's a decent piece. It's from a TV show, so you really can't go wrong. Again, Family Affair. Um, I, Brian Keith, I think, maybe was the father in the show, if I remember. Um, maybe P Peter Ustinov was the butler. I'm not sure. You'd have to look that up. But I remember watching the show. I instantly knew who the doll was, because the, the main... One of the, the daughters on the show literally carried one of these around all the time. But um, that's what I've got for you today. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you at least saw something that you can learn on. At least the hack, if nothing else. And the window parts. It goes the same thing for, like, door parts. Um, anything from new construction sites usually sells. As long as it's sealed, never been used. People missing pieces and on and on for that. So, uh, again, thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button. Hit like below. Comment, enjoy, and tell your friends. Thanks, and have a good day.